Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Bible Talk. I'm so glad that you were able to come on here today. Bible Talk is all about you, you, you. The uncensored, uncut, uncomfortable truth through the word of God. Hey, and y'all, we're back with another sermon series. And, and tonight, I'm getting ready to go right into it. Because I want to talk about life today. <laughs> life like this is a, a real thing we all experience life and that's where we're going throughout these next few weeks and, and what, how I came to this topic I was watching TV and um I saw the game board life um on some kind of documentary that I was watching and um God started to talk to me about life because even at that time I was experiencing life I was experiencing life, traumatic changes happening at one time, emotions just raging from one place to another. I was just going through it. Things that are happening good feels like they're bad at the same time. I'm talking about life today. And when God started talking to me about this, I said, okay, what about life? What about life in retrospect to this life board game? What are you trying to tell me about this? And, and I started to remember, even as a kid, while playing the game life, why I didn't even like the game. I started to, to regulate on why I, I didn't even like it. And it was because I never got to the end. I never completed the board. And it was for two reasons. It was too long and too hard. <laughs> so I never got through it. And it wasn't too hard to understand, but it was just too hard and too long to get finished. And that's how we do in real life. We, we, we play a couple of spins. We go through a couple of plays and then we give up. We don't finish the board. We can't finish the task in life because it's too long and it's too hard. It's too lengthy. It's too radical. It's too questionable. It's too many ands, do's and don'ts and buts. I'm talking about life today. And God today is saying life is about getting on board and keep playing the game. Keep on playing until you retire. And when I say retire, I mean death retirement. It's about finishing. And I want you to understand that the definition of life is the existence of an individual human being or animal. That's the Google definition. The first one. The existence of an individual human being or animal. So the question here is, is why do I exist? I'm talking about life today. Why do you have life today? Why did God create you? And it's more than just your, your, your dad and your mom got together, had sex, and boom, here you came. No, you were on purpose. But why? And, and, and that's what that definition um, exemplifies to me. Existence. Why? You must have wanted me, God, to be here on purpose. You created me. You molded me. But why? You exist on purpose. And another Google definition is the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity. Come on. Come on. Life is including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional activity, and continual change preceding death. Come, life includes the capacity full of growth, reproduction, functional activity, and continual change. Life is a continual change, and we have to understand that today. The good, the bad, it's continual. And I submit to you that they both happen at the same time. Good and bad can happen at the same time. It's just like a woman um, conceiving. And then now, even throughout pregnancy, she's having all of these aches and pains. Oh, she's carrying something good. 
but it comes with the bad. And that's what life is about. At the same time, you're getting ready to give birth. And something good is coming out of it, but at, in, in between it, at the same time, you experience the pains. And that's what life is about. In life, you get a two-for-one deal. The good and the bad. And they happen at the same time before death. It's not all life is good. No, 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 no. They both happen. At the same time. And the question today is, is how do I deal with life? And the word of today, the life card of today is, is decisions. That's how you deal with life. Real practical. That is the first card of my deck today in playing this life game. Decisions. And see, when you play the game of life, you get a card right off the gate. On this actual board game, if y'all can remember, come on, come on, take your mind back. You get a car out the gate. And as soon as you spin, you have to decide whether you're going to go left or right. Career or college. Which, which one will you choose? It's a decision. Life is about decisions. It's how you choose. So, and I'm not just talking about just decisions today. Because we decide all day and every day. That's, that's about, that's life. When I get up in the morning, I got to decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to go to work or if I'm going to stay home? If I'm going to be happy, if I'm going to be sad, if I'm going to stay in this marriage or if I'm not going to stay in this marriage. Are we going to work things out or not? Are we going to get our sibling relationships together or not? It's a decision. Every step of the day is a decision. But I ain't just talking to you about decisions today. I want to talk to you today about wise decisions. I'm going to show you how to make your life decisions wise decisions. Come on, we're we talking about getting stuff in order. We're talking about life. This is our life and this is, it's important. It's important. And God wants us to do it wisely. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I want somebody to understand that today. That's in, this, in the book of Psalms. Scripture, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if we if we make that the hub, if we make God the hub, <laughs> we every step we make will be done and chosen wisely. And so, and, and the fear of the Lord is just like reverence and honor and obedience. Come on, that's 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 what fear is. Acknowledgement. Make God the hub, not just, oh, uh, 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 we put God first. I hear people say we put God first, but no, no, you don't, because your life will reflect that. Your life will reflect God if you put God first. It's not just something to say. It's what we do. You got to understand. You got to understand it's not just about um, having an understanding of wh wh who God is. It's about putting God first. It's about actually really doing that, not just saying it. And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach us how to do it wisely today. So, and we don't want that. We don't want wisdom because we would have to drop Johnny. We would have to make some hard decisions if we put God first for real. The things that were pertinent in our life will start to come. Once we start to put God first, the things that are supposed to be there, we will, we will have to make hard decisions like not leave your kids at home while you go out and kick it. I mean, come on. This is, I mean, this is for somebody to understand. We don't want to put God first because then we will have to do right. Then we will start getting right things in our life. I'm talking about wise decisions. Somebody say life today. So. Before we get into anything, this is how our posture should be. When dealing with life, our posture, out the gate, you got to have a right standing first. Out the gate, your head should be like this. That, that should be our posture. At every step, at every breath we take, it should be like this. Every move you make, 
Lord, where should I go this morning? Should I make a left or right? Should I get on the highway or take the street? And it starts off like this. Head bowed. We have to have the right posture first. In that position, you can hear, listen, and get direction. That's the first thing. Head bowed, praying to God. And if it was me, if I if I created the life board game, that would be a square on the board game to pray. As soon as you could get out your car and have to make a left or a right, the first square you would have to step on is to pray. Come on, we need to get some praying squares today. And, and, and not just doing this when we, you know, want something from God, when we want to make him Santa Claus and we, we need him to uh, come through for us. No, not just then, but consistently. Remember, the definition of life was to mean changing consistently. So if life changes consistently, then we would have to bow consistently. Everything we do will come with a bow consistently because life changes consistently preceding death. Come on, we want we want right life. And I want to talk to you today about a guy who was able to make wise decisions. Oh, he made he he made the most wisest decisions because he did this or he had this kind of posture. The head bowed kind of posture at all times. And I want you to see how he was able to make a wise decision because this is getting ready to teach us how to start wising up. Somebody needs to wise up today. I'm talking about life decisions to wise decisions today. So this guy named Solomon, he had the ability to make wise decisions. Not decisions, but wise. So I want you to see what he did. The first thing he did ever when he became king, Solomon was a king. God appointed him to be king. And he came to this point one day, he was just minding his own business. I just imagined him on his throne. And he just minding his own business, probably filing his nails and getting the pedicure and the manicure. I don't know. Because King Solomon was the truth. And the Bible um, says that he was the most richest, wisest man to ever, ever live. And will be the only man who was the most richest and the most wisest to ever live. Nobody else will be like this man. However, we can figure out how to get as much as we can from him. Because God said we can get wisdom if we ask him. So let me show you how Solomon did it. Since, since I want the most out of life, I want to go to the guy who had the most wisdom and who had the most money. Okay? So, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 28. Verses 16 through 28. I'm coming out the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. It says, sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Two prostitutes, two co-workers, two brothers, two sisters, mother and daughter-in-law came to the king to have an argument settled. And the point right there is, is go to the king to get an argument settled. Go to God. God is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody need to hear that right now. Go to the king to have your argument settled. And one of them said this to the king. One of the prostitutes said, please, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. Come on, that's just like husband and wife and, and brother and sisters live in the same house. And I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. But three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But she said her baby died during the night when she rolled over on me. Now, I know she probably was rolling her eyes and rolling her head because that's what I would do when I'm trying to make a case. She said, but her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. And she probably called her a, a heifer or something. That's what I think. And she said, now we talk about two prostitutes. Now nah, they, they, they just coming. 
just telling it like it is. And she said she laid her dead child. She got up in the middle of the night, took my son from beside me while I was asleep. And she laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman, the other prostitute interrupted her and said, it certainly was your son. That dead son was certainly yours and the living child is mine. No, the first prostitute said, the living child is mine and the dead one is yours. And so they argue back and forth before the king. And I want somebody to know right there that sometimes you got to have an argument. God will let you kind of try to settle it by yourself. And then he will have to intervene if you go to him, though. I'm telling you, your arguments, the, the problems in life is not going to last always. If you go before the king, he's going to give you a resolution. Come on, I'm getting ready to show y'all how to make a wise decision. That good and bad decision. Then the king said this. Solomon said this. Let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours. And each says that the dead one belongs to the other. He like, I, I don't know who right or wrong. He said, all right, I'm going to do this. Bring me a sword. So a sword was bought to the king. And I want to make a point right there because we refer to the Bible as a sword. And I want somebody to know if you just get your Bible out right now, get it out before the king because God is the word and start reading some scriptures to him. He's getting ready to make a resolution. That's for somebody. Somebody is about to get a wise decision. Open up your Bible. So the king was brought a sword. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. Come on. We see life in two right here. I want y'all to see something. I want y'all to catch this. Give one half to one woman. And another half to another. The good to one woman. And the bad to another. Life is about good and bad. And he said cut it in half. <laughs> and I know somebody like. He getting ready to cut the baby. Then the woman. Who was the real mother. Because somebody is always going to be the person that's telling the truth. <laughs> then the woman who was the real mother of the living child. And who loved him very much cried out. Come on, somebody is getting ready to cry out. She said, oh no my lord. No, don't cut the baby in half. Just give her the child. Please don't kill him. But the other woman said, alright. He will neither be yours nor mine. Divide the baby up between us. <laughs> she said, ain't neither one of us going to have it. Then the king said this. He said, uh oh, hold on. Something don't sound right. Come on, use your ears when you need to make a decision. He said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live. Huh. For she is his mother. For she is his mother. Somebody wants a relationship. Somebody wants something to live and not die. Somebody wants right jobs and careers. Somebody wants that right now. Somebody wants something to live. Just like this woman did. And when all Israel heard the king's decision... The people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. You see how Solomon was able to make a precise, wise decision there? And I want y'all to see how. First of all, he listened and he had God. You want to know how he had God? Because they saw the wisdom, the scripture said it in here. They saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. And I want y'all to know, somebody is going to begin to look at you and notice the God in you by the decisions you make. 
I mean, your decision is going to be so concise that they're going to say only God could have did that. The premise here is to teach you how to render justice and you do it through listening and you do it by this posture. That's keeping God. That's being able to render justice for your life. That's for somebody. Somebody's getting ready to look at you. See, I promise you, if you make God the hub, if you make God the head and not the tail, somebody going to look at you and they going to say, look at God. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what's in the Bible. When you learn how to make wise decisions, you get whole life. The baby was able to be given to the mother in whole. Because Solomon was able to make a wise decision. Come on, I want somebody to be like Solomon. It's a bunch of Solomons on this line right now. He was able to take the good and bad and make it whole. And that's what God wants us to do for our life right now. To take the good and the bad out of our life and make it whole. How are you going to make a wise decision for both? Listening and keeping the bow posture. That's how you're going to do it. You take what's in front of you to get the right paths because only God can make right paths smooth. I want somebody to understand that today your left and your right decision is going to depict on how you keep your posture and what you do with the hub. If you don't want if you don't if you don't want to have good decisions and right life and right things for you and your family and right things for you and your career and right things for just the practical right buying the right car buying the white house if you don't want that just keep on going through life and making your own decisions that's why nothing pans out correctly because you're doing it in your own way he listen and i want to leave you with this Psalms 90, 10, and 12 says this. 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80. But even the best years, come on, this is in the word of God. And I saw this after God gave me the analogy to this. But even the best years are filled with pain, trouble. Even your best years are filled with pain and trouble. Two for one. He said, even your best years. And he said, soon they disappear and we fly away. But the word of God says this, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. We will grow in wisdom. Brevity means shortness of life. I want you to understand that your life is real short. But God, if you keep him at the hub, if you fear him, he will begin to grow you in wisdom. I want somebody to be sensitive to the wisdom that is coming off of this line right now because it's getting ready to jump on you. If you just take it, if you receive it in the name of Jesus, it's getting ready to jump on you. And I feel like it's some people on this line who need to come to Christ right now. You've been in the dump. You've been in a hole. You haven't been able to come out of some things. It's because you haven't kept God as your hood. God said, come to me right now. All who are heavy burden. All who have things laid upon them. He said, cast your cares upon me. For I will give you rest. I will teach you how to make the good and bad whole. Come on, you can come to him right now. If you um, have never received Jesus Christ, you can take up this offer. If you left Jesus Christ, this means you don't study, you haven't read your word, you really don't pray, you going your own way, doing this and that. You 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 constantly have some a little, you feel like your morals are good, but you're really just not really in a complete, in a complete space with your life you can come back to god right now and it's easy we can all do it together it's real easy 
I want everybody to just lift their hands because the Bible says if, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, then you're saved. That's it. That means you can come back home to Christ and that means you can receive Christ. It just comes with a confession. So, come on, if you just say it with me, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, then you're saved. If you believe that right now, just say, I believe. Just say, I believe. And if you type, I believe at the bottom, that means you're saved. That means you're safe. It's kind of like you just ran, you just hit a home run and now you just ran to the base. You're safe. In the name of Jesus, God is so proud of you right now. He is so happy that you made this decision. It is getting ready to save your life. Now, God, is able to teach you the first steps of getting wisdom is by coming home. We're getting ready to pray out. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for life and life more abundantly. You are the God who gives life. Now, God, teach us how to walk in the right paths, oh God. Teach us how to not just delay in life anymore. We have no time to delay. Oh, Father, teach us the way to go. You are the truth, the way, and the life. We thank you, oh God, from heaven above because you will show us. We will grow in wisdom as long as we keep you up top, as long as we keep you held up high. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, your word. Is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so, oh God, you will brighten up the way. You will take those rough paths and make them smooth. And we believe this word that you have told us today. We believe that we will make life decisions, wise decisions in the name of Jesus. We thank you for each and every person who has just um, received you. Now they are saved. Now you can teach them the way to go. And we thank you for this word. And for this prayer, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all. This is just another round. We're in a life series sermon, y'all. Come back next week. Hey, stick with me, y'all. We're going somewhere. Peace.